Uh, Hi everybody, I'm uh, especially happy to be here with you today because I'm here with my friends George and Nigel. They are brown pelicans and they just came to live with us about a week ago. So we're very happy to have them here and I'm very happy to do this video, Bird is the Word, because we are where the birds are, where the feathers are around here. We love to specialize in birds. So in this video, we're gonna learn all about some fantastic birds and some pretty cool facts about all birds. And of course, we're gonna learn about these guys. They're pretty fantastic. The brown pelican. So let's see what other birds we can find around the ranch. Birds are my favorite animal group. You wanna know why? because they come in all sizes, shapes, colors, and personalities. They all have very different personalities and you never know what you're gonna find in the next bird. Now we have some fantastic birds at Freedom Ranch and we're gonna learn about several of them. But first, let's learn about some characteristics that all birds share. So all birds share a few things, from the smallest bird to the largest bird. They all have feathers. Those feathers keep them nice and warm and they also keep them dry. They actually act kind of like a raincoat. Characteristic number two, all birds have two wings. But can all birds fly? Absolutely not. Third characteristic, all birds stand on two legs or maybe swim on two legs. And the last one, all birds hatch from eggs. A few other interesting facts about birds is the fact that you can look at their beaks to determine what they eat. And their feet can tell you a lot about the environment that they live in. So let's check out some specific birds that live at the ranch. Let's start with some water birds. This is boss swan. He is a mute swan and he came to us because he was being a pest on someone's property. So we are happy to have boss one. He's not a pest to us, but he does pick people that he doesn't like. And these guys can run about 22 miles an hour with their wings out. So if boss one doesn't like you, you better take off to higher ground. And in the water, they can paddle with their feet pretty fast, up to 1.6 miles per hour. That's pretty fast in the water. Check out those major feet for doing all of that paddling. Now, mute swans eat all sorts of vegetation and they'll take out some bugs and all that good stuff too. And boss swan has found his mate for life here at Freedom Ranch, and that's a Canada goose. It's a pretty sweet friendship that they have formed. Let me tell you about George and Nigel, the brown pelicans. They've only been with us a few weeks now, and they are slowly adjusting, but they are adjusting very well. They are hurricane victims from the 2020 season on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. A wildlife rehabber named Maggie with Wildlife Care and Rescue took great care of them for the past 10 months until it was time for them to head to an education facility. We just happened to be blessed to get these guys to use for education. Now they were found after the hurricanes, more than likely they were separated from their mom and dad and they were hurt and so they had to be raised by a wildlife rehabber and they did a fantastic job but because they are imprinted they associate people for everything they need they've got to stay in captivity now the following pictures are pictures of when george and nigel first arrived george was the first one to peek out of his crate and he immediately went over to nigel's crate to talk him into coming out of his crate, telling him it's a safe place, come on out. And there they are sitting comfortably on the crate. The next video is fun. Now because they're still babies, they still make their baby sound when they're hungry. Uh, 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 uh. 
Pretty cute, right? So the older they get, the color will change. Right now they're about a year old. They will not be completely mature until they're three years old. And then they will look more like the brown pelicans that we're used to seeing sitting on the piers on the coast. The white chest with more of the gray color instead of the brown color. Brown pelicans are amazing hunters. They can dive from heights as high as 30 to 60 feet above shallow coastal waters to find their fish. Once they see a fish in shallow water, they dive for it, catch that fish, and then dip their head forward so they can let all the water out and then swallow the fish. That pouch is called a guler pouch and it can hold up to three gallons of water. Now they don't need that much water inside of their bellies. Their bellies can only hold about a gallon of water. So that's why they dip all of that water out. There's so many great facts about brown pelicans I would love to share with you, but we only have time for a few more. The first one is that they incubate their eggs with those adorable webbed feet. The second one has to do with their diving abilities. Ever wonder how they protect their internal organs at impact when they dive for fish? Well, the answer is air sacs just under their skin. They inflate them right before they make that impact and that protects all of their internal organs. They also know to turn their head to the left, which protects their trachea on the right side of their throat pretty fantastic birds. To end our session about the brown pelicans, let's take a look at George eating some more fish. Watch him shake it straight down his throat and it kind of helps you understand why they need a little bit of water to go down the throat with the fish. Are you ready for the bird species with a terrible reputation, but a perfect purpose? Think of the last time you saw a sight like this. Was it creepy or did you think it was absolutely beautiful? Well, I think vultures are one of the best species of birds on the planet. And here's why. Vultures love their purpose in life. They don't just have one purpose, they have two. Job number one, or purpose number one, to clean up the world. They love to eat all the dead things, things that died on the roadside, things that died in the forest, the fields, or even your backyard. They love to eat. They have very sharp beaks to eat dead things with. They have sharp eyesight to find them with, and they have a great sense of smell to find the dead stuff too. But we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Their second job or purpose is to stop the spread of disease with their urine. You heard me right, with their pee. Basically, these birds have really strong acids in their bellies. That acid is stronger than battery acid. So once they eat an animal that died of a terrible disease like rabies, they can kill that disease in their belly with all of those stomach acids. And once they pee everything out, their urine is very clean. Scientists have done research on it. It actually has a disinfectant in their urine. So that's great for our environment, but it's also great for them. When their legs are dirty, all they have to do is pee on their legs and it's directional. They can pee on their left leg or their right leg. Pretty awesome, right? Now we have three vulture ambassadors here. Moses, we've already talked about in another video. That's our black vulture. So we're gonna focus a little bit on our turkey vultures, Clarissa and Mariah. 
Clarissa and Mariah are both turkey vultures and they love to work. They're both imprinted, so that means they associate people for everything they need. Clarissa is 22 years old. She's done this her whole life and she's our diva. She loves to fly over people and hear their screams. Miss Mariah is about four years old and she was found as a very young chick, so she is highly imprinted can never be released back out into the wild, but they love inspiring people to love vultures. So let's make you all vulture experts. The next time you see them flying in the sky and you wanna know the difference between a turkey vulture and a black vulture, here's how. If they have all the silver underneath, that's a turkey vulture. And of course the red head if they're close enough to see. And if they're a black vulture, they're gonna have the silver on just the tips of their wings. And of course, the black head. So now all of you are vulture experts. I hope the next time you see this sight, you will stand in awe instead of fear. Let's close out the vulture section with Clarissa doing what she loves to do, soaring over people. about a bird that everybody loves, owls. But I don't think people realize why they love owls. They are magnificent hunters, but they're also cute. Let's find out what makes them such great hunters. Wow, that is an intense stare of the little eastern screech owl. Now they're small, but they're mighty. They're kind of like the chihuahuas of the owl group. They've got to be extra tough because they're so small. And because they're small, they've got to have those feather tufts on the top of their head to help them camouflage because everything would like to eat them. So they've got to blend in really well. Now the first thing let's talk about are talons. Talons can be small or big depending on the owl. Now these are the little screech owl's talons, but if you're a bug or a little mice or lizard or snake, these talons look ferocious. So screech owls are great to have in your backyard. Now these are the talons of the mighty great horned owl. They can take out possums, raccoons, small cats and dogs, snakes, rats, mice, rabbits, all of those little creatures. Great horned owls are great to have around. So the size of the talons determines the size of the prey that they can catch, kill, and eat for dinner. Of course, feathers play a big role in any bird's life, but for owls, they're extra important because owls can fly silently to sneak up on their prey. Helps them because most of them are nocturnal. How do they fly silently? Well, their feathers are kind of barbed on the end, kind of like if you had split ends in your hair, and that helps the wind to flow freely through the ends of their feathers and allows them to fly silently. The last thing we're gonna talk about that make owls mighty hunters are their hearing and the shape of their face. Check out Groot, our barred owl here. See the roundness of her face, kind of the heart shape, of her face, basically that helps them to hear better. Their face acts like a satellite dish. The stiffness of their feathers on their face and the shape of their face allows the sound of all the little prey to bounce straight off of their feathers and straight into their ears on the side of their head. That allows them to pinpoint the prey much better. Most owls also have asymmetrical placement of their ear holes. That means one ear hole is a little higher than the other ear hole, and that also helps them to pinpoint the sound of their prey. Now we know why owls are such fantastic hunters, but why are they so cute? It's probably those eyes. 
the eyes are actually too large for them to move around in their sockets. So they cannot move their eyes. And I think that's what gives them the cute look. And it's also why they've got to turn their head almost all the way around to see. They cannot turn their head all the way around though. That's just a myth. So that's the owls, pretty cute, but a formidable foe. It's sad but true, we've reached the end of bird is the word. Y'all don't forget to look for birds today.